Hello Sagittarius, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Sagittarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It's totally free, it doesn't cost you anything. If there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Sagittarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you and a two of swords. Interesting. It feels to me like there's kind of a, um, I don't know that there's a, a, a direct choice in front of you right now, like if you're literally trying to decide something. I feel like what you have decided is that you're going to trust in spirit a little bit more, right? Because the two of swords is not so much about making a choice or having to make a choice or failing to make a choice. It's about how you make your choices. Yeah, about how you make it. You can either do pros and cons, right? Weigh the options, uh, make a list, you know, assign everything a certain point value and then tally up the points at the end. Complicated stuff, um, which is, you know, it's a good thing to do. It's good to think about stuff. But the way you make decisions, I feel like you are transcending that kind of analysis, that kind of either or you know, and you're connecting with the spiritual energy. You're connecting really with the moon. There's a little moon at the top of that card. You're connecting with your kind of psychic energy. Yeah. Let's put this into some context. Let's see what's going on with you. Three of swords. Interesting that we've got a two of swords and a three of swords. We've got the moon here connecting with that psychic energy to make the decisions, but then we've also got memories. We've also got this idea, we've got Saturn here, right? We've got this idea that we want to transcend our kind of our analysis, you know, and connect with spirit in order to make a decision, but we also feel that we're kind of hemmed in by our past. We're hemmed in by our memories, right? That we're restricted by everything that's ever happened to us. And it kind of feels, I, I don't know if, if you've been really, if this is a period of time in your life, I kind of feel like February, March might be a time for you where it's kind of the, it's like the anniversary of something that happened, you know, it's, or it's somebody's, you know, birthday or something to someone that has passed. It's to me, like the next couple of months, um, for some reason are significant for you and they bring up a lot of these old memories. Yeah. And they make you feel a certain way. Cause when we have these memories, when we relive the experiences of the past, we are reliving them, right? That means that we're feeling all that stuff again. And we're kind of, you know, we're, we're, we're in, in it again. And as far as our unconscious goes, as far as our body goes, it doesn't really know the difference between past, present and future, right? So we use our mind to relive past painful experiences and it, we're just kind of hurting again. It's happening again to us as far as unconscious, as far as our, our bodies go. But the same thing can be true of projecting into the future. Let's start thinking where we want to be, what we want to do, how we want to feel. Let's relive experiences that have not happened yet, right? We use that power of visualization, that intellectual, mental, psychic power to relive an experience, to experience something now that we're trying to manifest in the future. As far as our body goes, as far as our unconscious goes, it's happening literally right now, right? So maybe we're creating, uh, helping to create that future, right? And so this might be what we're really trying to transcend with this Two of Swords too. Now we've got some fire energy. We've got a Seven of Wands down here. We've got a Seven of Swords over here. We've got a Seven. Interesting. Interesting. Seven, Seven, Seven. 
And we've got a knight of, of swords here. A lot of swords energy right this way. This is really a mental thing for you. This is really something that we're trying to, um, you know, we're trying to, I think, like I said at the beginning, we're, we're trying to be aware of how we're making decisions. And maybe this is, we're trying to be aware of how we are using our mind and creating our reality right here in the present moment. Are we reliving the past painful experiences right here in the present moment? Or are we projecting out into the future and creating that future state that we want to be in right now here in this moment? 777. The divine energy is, is pushing you forward. And it may be a painful experience right now, but it's worth it. We've got the lover's card down here general energy that's you combining with your purpose this is you being married to your destiny this is really the card of prophecy right this is the card that says you are realizing what you are meant to do this think of this as an initiation and we've got fire and earth fire and earth fire and earth this is how you are manifesting your future manifesting your destiny this is your path and i think that it is being revealed to you it does feel like a prophecy to me, and it feels like this is an initiation. This is a something you have to endure, and you will come out the other side knowing exactly, exactly what your destiny is, right? More court cards here. More, more and more court cards here. So I wonder if there is something going on with some family members, um, and maybe it, it is something that happened in the past, and this is kind of around the around the anniversary of something like that. Um, I feel, I don't know why, I feel like you've lost several people right in, around this time, right? Maybe February, March. I feel like you've, maybe not all at once, maybe over the years, but it seems like it always happens February or March. Um, there's some reason why this, t this period of time is not the best for you, okay? And I feel like there is a loved one that had something to do with their breathing, um, I don't know if they had lung cancer or they just their lungs weren't working, right? And I think they passed that way. And that might be maybe the most recent uh, loss that you've experienced. Um, I think Spirit wants you to know that those, those people that you have that kind of emotional, spiritual tie to, and that's part of the meaning of this lover's card too, those people are always with you. Okay, this is that kind of, this is, you know, once we're tied to somebody spiritually, um, that, that, does not get severed easily, okay? And certainly does not get severed by the transition from one plane of existence to the next, right? Um, so these, these energies, they are kind of, they, they're, they're as guides for you, I think, right? And I feel as if you still, um, well, I almost wonder if, if someone in your family was or is still perhaps a medium or a channel to the spirit realm to the other side or whatever. Maybe you yourself are. Um, because I feel like there's a lot of communication going on here. We see the whole family right here in front of you. This is like the whole family. We got that lover's card. And, and the lover's card doesn't always mean romance. People mistake this for like the card of relationships and romance. Uh, sometimes it does. Yeah, sometimes not. To me, what it means right now is family connection. Yeah. And maybe um, this is a process for you, really, of, of aligning yourself with your destiny um, and, I don't know, kind of maybe moving toward your family, maybe kind of welcoming these energies into your lives instead of looking at these as painful memories, painful events, and this time of year is really, I think, kind of a dark time for you. Maybe we're trying to look at this as light, as beauty. You know, let's make this into a, uh, a time of the year where you can reconnect with your loved ones. Yeah, because it's, it's really, it's kind of odd, really, that we see them all right in front of you here. I mean, you know, all these different court cards. And um, it's, it's, really, it's really kind of interesting to me. Uh, it's not an easy process, but before we get too far into this, let's select the mystery card. I do not want to forget... This is a random card from the Smith Waite Tarot that we are just going to um, set aside here. We're going to put Tiny Bob Ross right on top. We're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together. It will give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. If at any point during the reading 
you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments. Yeah. Let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise in intuition. But first, the only major arcana card we have is the lover's card. And again, this is the card of family. This is the card of prophecy. Okay. And I, I feel like um, part of your destiny right now is to learn how to kind of transmute this psychic, intellectual, mental energy from the challenging, dark, and painful uh, experience that it might currently be into one of connection and love and, um, and communication with your spirit guides. I feel like these are all, and maybe, it's, maybe they're not all family members, but I feel like you've got a really big team in front of you. Right, And it's almost like they're just kind of waiting for you to make that breakthrough to, to where you realize that they're there. And maybe it's family members, maybe it's ancestors, maybe it's you know something else, angels, spirit guides, whatever you want to call it. But I feel like they're all kind of, they're all waiting for you to make that breakthrough, right? To get through that, that this difficult passageway. See, we see all the difficulty here on the, the vertical axis of the path of the dove here. We have the seven, the three, and the seven. Um, so it's kind of like we're we're trying to harmonize, but we feel like we're we're going through this very difficult uh, initiation, very very difficult breakthrough, awakening, spiritual ascension, whatever you want to call it. Opening yourself up, I think, to the the two of swords, that psychic energy, and maybe. Maybe you've always felt like you, you've been a bit of a medium, but maybe it's something that you've always sort of denied or didn't believe in or didn't really accept or you didn't want to be that way. You didn't want to be different. Something that, because I feel like it's something that you have to accept. It's something that you have to kind of open yourself up to again and refine. I feel like it, it's kind of natural for you, but the way we've, perhaps always looked at it was a distraction. It's like you're trying to read a book and other people in the room are talking to you and you're just like, hey, I'm trying to read, you know? So it's just kind of like more of an annoyance and an inconvenience than something that is like part of your destiny. Uh, you're trying to do your destiny and everyone's just distracting you, you know? So I wonder if you have this, um, I, I wonder if you've learned how to kind of turn the volume down on those spiritual connections or that mediumship kind of thing. And maybe to the point now where you just kind of don't hear it. Maybe now it's just like a low hum instead of the, the voices, you know. And I think you are the one, too, that, that needs to have some sort of white noise while you sleep. Um, I myself, I like to have white noise while I'm reading a book. Um, for me, I can't concentrate. I can't sleep. I can't really do anything if I can understand the words or if there's a certain rhythm i need random like white noise or, or whatever color noise i don't care um and for instance um i can't go to sleep listening to a podcast and i don't think you can either and the reason why is because my mind will focus on those words i will just kind of involuntarily listen and comprehend the words that i'm hearing and i can't fall asleep because my attention is on those words. Same thing with music. I can't listen to music while I sleep because that rhythm, that steady beat, is going to get my attention, you know, um, and then I won't be able to sleep. So I need random, static noise. Uh, it can be uh, words, but I can't. Un it, it can't be words that I understand, right? And so I feel like you're kind of the same way, and I feel as if you... Um, you need a lot of that kind of noise to kind of drown things out. You've learned other ways, maybe not just like the white noise, but to turn down the volume of the, uh, the spiritual connections. Yeah, and that kind of mediumship thing. Um, because what, I, what I'm sensing now is that we're learning how to kind of tune into that in a, in a different way, in a way that is helping us to work through a lot of the pain. And, and maybe this is... You know, I'm using the example of mediumship, but maybe it's, maybe it's not exactly that. And what I mean is um, these spirits or entities 
could really be the personification of the memories that you are experiencing. And so what we've been trying to do is really shut out the memories of the voices of these people because we don't want to relive that. We don't want to keep feeling the feeling that we have attached to these, which is loss or sorrow or pain or whatever it is, trauma. And so in the past, we've just tried to turn it off. I've tried to not listen to these voices so I don't have to experience that whole experience again. And I wonder if now we're starting to realize that we need to not drown it out, not ignore those memories or those feelings, but to harness them, to maybe transcend the way that we've been experiencing them. Instead of the painful memories of loss and stuff like that, maybe we can look at it as, uh, you know, that, um, that these are now um, very supportive and assisting forces in our lives. That even the memories, the personalities behind the memories, um, and the, the essence of these people is there to help us and support us and not to just kind of keep us locked up in what feels like a challenging and dark period, right? And again, I think kind of February, March is, um, is usually a rough time of year for you, okay? Um, now we've got the seven of pentacles at the top of the path of the dove here. And this to me, it's kind of like, this is a time in your life when you're in that three of swords mode, it almost feels like there's not a lot getting done. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, it, maybe it's difficult to really just do like normal things, you know, when we're in this, I don't know why it feels like, like a two month period of time. I don't know why that is, uh, like February, March. Um, and so it seems like we, we feel rather unproductive during these times. Okay. And the seven of wands underneath everything, it does feel like this is, um, it's a challenge to just get the simple things done. These two cards together, this is fire to earth. This is manifesting your will, right? But this is very difficult for you to arouse the will, very difficult for that will to connect with behavior, with the, re with the physical world, right? So this is a lot of difficulty kind of getting normal things done, just getting routine stuff done. It's kind of a challenge right now, okay? Um, but I, I, I really do like the Two of Swords. I feel like this is us trying to transcend this kind of, um, the perception of this, I don't know if it's a period of time or what exactly it is. Um, have you been hearing a certain song playing on the radio lately? Or like, I don't know, in stores or shopping centers or on your phone or in, in videos or something? I feel like there's one song that's kind of following you around, right? Pay attention to the words of that song. Okay, that there's a message there for you. There is a very, a very distinct message that's trying to come through to you. And I really think it is that you've got this whole spiritual team with you. These people, the, these entities, spirits, guides, angels are right in front of you. And all we have to do is switch from the three of swords to the two of swords, and then we're in harmony with this message, and we can hear the message. And this is coming through, and this is telling you about your destiny, right? And this is, I don't know if this is your guardian angel, if this is your, um, you know, your, your main spirit guide, if this is your true self, higher self, there is kind of this urgent message, yeah? And I think it's going to take us over to the path of the serpent. And as we do this, I'd like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and it helps out the channel. I appreciate that. All right. Also, leave a comment for me. Let me know how you're doing. Okay. So we've got the Lover's card. Again, this is our only major Arcana card. And this is, this is prophecy. This is your destiny. This is you willingly entering into this union with the spirit realm, with your guides, with your angel, with your higher self, true self, guardian angels, uh, ancestors, uh, with accepting whatever it is that they are telling you about your destiny. And I wonder if they, you have been getting a lot of messages that you're kind of meant for something, whether it's for just the mediumship aspect itself, or, um, you know, if you're meant for something, something greater, if there's something specific with the family. Um, and I wonder if you've been kind of 
I don't, maybe not ignoring that message, but just not wanting to hear it right now. We're in this two month window of, of kind of misery and you don't want to hear it. Yeah. But I feel like you are being, there is, spirit is trying to get these messages through to you to confirm your destiny, but you already know what this is. It's just almost like we haven't accepted it yet. Does that make sense to you? I feel like this is, um, I feel like you have some sort of power object. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's um, a piece of jewelry. It almost seems like a pendant, but it seems like kind of big. Uh, metal with some sort of um, some sort of a jewel or some sort of a picture or something shiny in the middle of it. I don't know if it's a deep red color, um, but I feel that there's some sort of object. It's like a power object for you. Um, I feel like you've kind of wrapped it up in something dark and you shoved it in a bottom drawer, like a sock drawer or something. You just you don't want to look at it. And it's almost like you don't want its power to affect you. You're just, you're kind of saying like, no. Um, and so I, I wonder if there was a point recently where you kind of rejected your, your fate, your destiny. You know, um, if you just, you try to just sh wrap it up in something dark and shove it in a sock drawer and say, no, you know, I don't want, I don't want that. I, I choose not to be a part of this or, you know, whatever. Um, I feel like you're kind of coming around though. I feel like we're starting to kind of get over that initial feeling, you know, of, of stuffing it in the sock drawer and trying and just forgetting about it. Um, it's like we didn't, we don't want the power to affect us, right? We're kind of trying to insulate ourselves or something. I don't know exactly what that's about. I'm sure I, you do. You know what that, what that means. So the, the lover's energy here, this is really about you accepting and committing to your path, to your destiny, to who you are, to what you know you're meant to be. This is the prophecy that says, you know, you know your fate. And this is the part of the prophecy where you then accept your fate. You go grab that thing out of the sock drawer and you, you embrace it. Yeah, you embrace it. And in the position of the environment, we have a lot of emotions, right? This is the court cards all together indicate a group of, of personalities, right? But individually, they mean something different. And I think the, the queen of cups in the position of the environment is really, um, is really the, the initial flood of psychic activity, emotions, intuitions, the, the real, like, you're just kind of, you're jumping into the pool, right? You're not, you're not tiptoeing in, you're just cannonball right in, and you're fully immersed in this. And I think that it is somewhat overwhelming. You're going to have to kind of learn to swim a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be uh, a lot. You're going to be confronted with a lot of things, but I think that we're learning how to use our psychic mental um, you know, gifts and talents um, in order to, to deal with this so that we don't get into the three of swords, that we can really kind of maintain this, the balance really of the two of swords. And I like that we have water, fire, and air here because this is, this is balance, you know, and it really is this air that is keeping the fire and the water um, from extinguishing each other. Right. So we have the, the, the Prince of Wands here. And this, I think, is your, is your commitment. Even when things get, get rough, we've got that seven of, the seven of Wands down here too. So things do get challenging, but you're able to stay the course because you have accepted your destiny now. You, you, have, um, you have drawn this some sort of power. It's from that talisman amulet thing that I'm seeing. Somehow that's a source of power. You've drawn power from it and you're able to sustain your efforts. Right? You're fully on your path now. I mean it sounds it sounds like a like a myth. You know, it sounds like a Greek myth or something. Um, but you're really able to to continue uh, on your path with this energy. And this is the difficult part, I think, is um, even when the emotions get overwhelming, we don't lose our stamina. We don't lose our, our power. Yeah. And, uh, 
I think that really is the challenge. I like the card we have next, though. It's the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is, to me, it's the, the harmonizing of both the water and the air. It's learning, learning that the past, that our memories, that our history does not have to be a source of weakness or of despair. It can be the source of that power. And so maybe this amulet talisman thing, maybe it's some kind of a moment, memento, maybe it's like a box even. Um, maybe it's some piece of, of, I don't know, it seems like it's a big kind of piece of jewelry. I don't know what it is. Um, but maybe that's part of a larger, a larger symbol um, of like a box of memories or something, you know. Um, something that kind of represents uh, this past or this history. I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, but it's the idea that those objects, memories, the pictures, right, the thoughts and feelings, um, rather than making life more difficult and making it difficult for us to manifest our will, that it can be used as a source of power. Now, the mystery card. I want to look at that. I want that to be some very strong earth energy. I want emperor, empress. I want nine or a ten of pentacles. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments, okay? Oh, well, it's the fool. Uh, maybe this is better. The fool here is, I think, the, the transcendence, right? The um, entering into the spirit realm and kind of um, learning how to, learning how to accept this kind of stuff as just a natural part of life. And it's kind of like, it's it's not that the fool is unaffected by things, but the fool can kind of, the fool really can choose to let things flow through it. It's the zero card, nothing sticks, right? So to me, this is someone who is just kind of naturally and spontaneously going with the flow of their destiny. Have heard, They have heard, or maybe not even heard, the prophecy. Uh, but they're fulfilling it nonetheless. And none of these experiences are going to stick to them. So it's not, we, we don't get dragged down into the kind of the quicksand of these, of our history, of our past, of our memories here. Um, and so I think that this is probably the, the start of things. And then we can learn how to actually use those as sources of power, but maybe the first step because the fool really is, a lot of the time, it's talking about the first step. The first step is to not let this stuff stick to us and be open to whatever is coming off the edge there, whatever is waiting for us. And that, to me, is spirit. It's, it's all of this spiritual energy that we see with these different personalities, whether they're angels, ancestors, spirit guides, loved ones, whatever these are. Um, we're kind of, we're, we're trusting in that. Yeah, and that's the first step. It's kind of letting go of these, the, the, the attachment to those memories that is holding us back, holding us down. Releasing ourselves from those, we kind of, we get light as air, right? Like this fool energy. So I like this very much. I think this is very good for you. Now we are going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around, click on the link that's up in the corner, or there is one down in the video description. New readings for Sagittarius every Wednesday and Sunday. I'm here every day. Just come on back. See me again tomorrow. Okay? If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.